This video is a complete overview for the formula lightweight formulation software for perfumery. So in this video, I'm going to give you a complete tutorial guide on how to use the software and all of its features. This video will be perfect for you if you've just downloaded Formula but aren't yet sure how to use it, or if you're already using Formula but maybe there's a certain feature that you don't know how to use, or you're just interested in learning about the features you may not be aware that exist inside the software. Formula is available for iPhone, iPad, and Mac. In this tutorial, we're gonna be using the Mac version of the app, but the iPhone and iPad versions are almost exactly the same, so you should be able to learn how to use those also by following this tutorial. Where there's a difference between the versions, I'll try to point it out. Most of the time, that's gonna be, instead of right-clicking on something as you would do on a Mac, you simply long press to achieve the same thing on the iPhone or iPad. So let's begin then. Now, when you open Formula for the first time, it's gonna prompt you with a message saying welcome and asking whether you would like to initialize the app with a starting library of 20 raw materials. So the way the app works is first and foremost, you can use Formula to store your raw materials in perfumery or at least store information about them. Now, there are 20 uh, raw materials with information that the app can kind of pre-populate for you so you've got something to get started with. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna click yes and populate those 20 raw materials so we can use those in this tutorial to get started. However, there are a couple of reasons why you may not wish to do this. The first reason is if you really don't care about having these starting raw materials and have your own set of raw materials and just wanna begin with those from the outset. The other reason is if you've already installed Formula on another device, say you've already got an iPad and now you're using it on your Mac, well, then you're already gonna have your data in your iCloud account, and that will already sync into your new version of the app. That means if you go and add these 20 raw materials when you start for the first time on the Mac, it's going to add them again on top of the data that you already have synced over from your iPad, and most of the time you're not gonna to wanna to do that. So if you're syncing your data from an existing install of the app on another device using the same iCloud account, then you're probably gonna to wanna to press no because you probably don't want to have these starting raw materials added again to your raw materials collection. So I'm gonna click yes. And what we're gonna see is now the app's populated us with a load of raw materials. Let's take a closer look at the user interface then. So on the left, we've got our raw materials library. This is a big list of all of our raw materials. You can think of this a bit like a filing cabinet where we look through to find the different raw materials. Then on the right, we've got our information card for the raw material. Think of this like a note card on the raw material that you would file away in your filing cabinet. This is where you store all of the information about your raw material. Now, if we look at the bottom, you can also see that we've got some different tabs. So as well as our raw materials library, we've also got our formulas library. If we go and click on the formulas library, then at the moment we'll see an empty screen. But when we go over this later, what we'll see is similarly to the raw materials side of the app, we also have a formulas library, which will be a list of all of our formulas. And then finally, we have this big space on the right, which is where we will actually write our formulas. So to begin with, let's go back to the raw materials library. So as you can see, we've got all of our raw materials laid out into categories and each category has its own color. We'll talk a bit more about categories and their colors in a minute, but for now, let's just look at the raw materials. Each raw material has its name, and then on the right-hand side of the entry, you can see this little triangle symbol. And what that denotes is the position in the fragrance pyramid. So when doing perfumery, a common concept that's used is the top, mid, or base note concept, or the fragrance pyramid. So Formula allows you to categorize your raw materials into five levels of the fragrance pyramid, and we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Now, you don't have to use the fragrance pyramid if you don't want to, but most perfumers find it fairly helpful. So that's the raw materials library. Next, let's take a look at the search in the raw materials library. So say we are looking for citrus, for example, and we've got a massive raw materials library, so we just wanna filter down to that without having to scroll through to find it. Well, we can just type in citrus in order to filter down to anything containing citrus. So that will be the category, in this case, citrus. If we go and press this X button, then we can go and clear the search and start searching for something else again. Let's say we wanna search for something else. Let's say this time I wanna search for all of our essential oils. So that's gonna be something with EO in the name. Well, I can press Command F to activate the search bar again on the Mac without having to click on it. And then I'm gonna type in EO. 
press enter and it will perform the search. So notice this time that the EO is actually at the end of the name and I've typed it in lowercase, but in the raw materials names, it's uppercase. So this search bar is actually case insensitive and it doesn't matter where in the name that you find these characters. So in this case, it's given us results split across two categories. Now, the search will always search for both categories and names. And later on, we'll see that there's also an advanced option you can use to actually search within the description for the raw materials. This can be useful if you wanna search for things like descriptors. Before moving on to the ingredients cards, let's look at the final features of the raw materials library. So for any raw material, you can also right click on it. And there are two options. Firstly, a delete. So if you don't want patchouli essential oil anymore, you can go and delete it. And then there's also lavender essential oil. In this case, we might want to rename it instead of EO. We may actually want to go and type essential oil. The raw materials library also has some more advanced options for app wide import and export. If you click the tray icon in the top left of the raw materials library, you can access these options. So you can import a raw materials library from a CSV file. This would be, for example, if you had an Excel file of your raw materials with different columns for the different properties, and you wanted to import those into formula. Now, this is currently an experimental feature, so we won't cover it in this tutorial. However, if you're interested, you can look at the advanced guide on the Formula website with instructions for how to do this. Then there's some export options. So this is if you, for example, want to back up your data. One thing you can do is you can export your raw materials as a TSV file, which is a tab separated variable file. Essentially, this is a kind of file that you can import into something like Excel or another spreadsheet software. So if you go and export your raw materials library as a TSV, it will generate this file and then you can go and open that in your spreadsheet software and that will give you some kind of backup for your data. Next, we've got the export raw materials PDF. Now, instead of exporting all of the data about your raw materials, what the PDF export does is it gives you a nice list of your raw materials. This can be useful when you want something that's a bit more presentable, and it can be useful as an inventory list, or if you want to give someone else a list of your raw materials in your collection in order for them to, say, give you advice, for example, or give you suggestions on, say, things you're missing or something else like that. Finally, we've got the formulas library export. So this is a simple backup option for your formulas. It simply generates a text document with information about your formulas. That's just if you're worried about your data, then you can always go and export your formulas to make sure you've got some kind of backup of them. Okay, so now we've done the raw materials library, let's talk about the raw materials cards. So. In the top left hand corner of the raw materials library, what you can actually go and do is press the add symbol and that will add you a new raw material. Now notice when we've added a raw material, we've gone and got ourselves a new raw materials card. So firstly, let's look at this raw materials card UI. When you scroll down, it will actually hide the bar at the bottom. This can be nice sometimes if you wanna do things like take screenshots. When you scroll back up, it will appear again. You've also got this expand button at the top, which again will allow you to have a more clean UI if you just wanna focus in on that raw materials card. So now let's look at the card itself. We've essentially got a lot of different fields for different bits of information about the raw material. Then at the bottom, we've got some different tables, which I'll discuss in a minute. So let's say we've just gone and bought ourselves a new raw material and we wanna represent that in formula. Well, now we've added this empty new raw materials card, we can go and add the details for our new raw material into the card. So let's say it's basil essential oil. We're gonna type in the title, basil EO, I'm gonna call it for now. Next, after the title field, we have another field which you can use for things like the cast number or the botanical name. Really, you can type whatever you want into this field. So I'm gonna give it the botanical name of the basil, which is Ossimum basilicum. Now next, we get to pick a category. And when we go and pick a category, this will define the color of the raw material and how it's presented in the raw materials library. So if we click on uncategorized, it will give us a list of all of our categories that we currently have. So in this case, I think that basil most closely fits an aromatic category. So I'm gonna go and click aromatic to select the aromatic category. And now you're gonna see that in the raw materials library, Basil EO has been updated um, and it's been put into that category. Next, we have the option to add a supplier. 
Now this can be useful if you want to keep track of where you bought the stuff from in the first place. So if we go and click on the supplier option, we'll have a list of all of our suppliers. Now at the moment, we don't have any suppliers. So what we need to do is press this add button in the top right hand corner, and then we'll get to add a new supplier. So I'm going to call it uh, raw materials shop. And let's say we bought this stuff from a raw material shop, then press create, it will add this supplier. So in reality, you would go and put the names of the people you're buying this stuff from, and then you can use that as a reference. So we're going to go and click on raw material shop. And now we've got that as the supplier. Say in the future we want to change that, we can always go back in there and we can either click on a different one if we've got other suppliers or we can press clear supplier to reset it to empty so there's no supplier. Next we have a simple field for the inventory amount. This is kind of like a notepad area or just something you can use to write down how much you have. So let's say we just bought 50 grams of basil oil, we can type in 50 grams. But in this field, you can pretty much type whatever you want. So say you'd bought 50 milliliters, you could also put in 50 milliliters or something else entirely. Next we have the cost per gram. So this field is used to keep track of how much your raw material costs. And this field is also used in the formulas on the other side of the app in order to calculate how much your formulas cost. So it's important to put an accurate cost per gram for your raw materials if you want to know how much the whole formulas are going to cost. So let's say that our basil essential oil cost us two pounds per gram, then I type in two, press enter, and it will put on a pound symbol for me. Now don't worry if you live in a different country with a different currency, formula should take into account your local currency. So say you live in the USA and you use dollars, then you can type in two and a dollar sign should come up instead. Now, you may not always know the cost per gram of your raw material because say you've bought a certain amount of it for a certain cost. Um, maybe you don't know how to do that calculation manually or you don't want to do it manually. Well, Formula has a feature where you can simply right click on the cost per gram field or if you're on iPhone or iPad, you just long press, long tap on that field and you can press this calculate cost option. A little pop-up will appear and what you can do is type in the total amount you paid and how much it cost. So say we paid 20 pounds and that 20 pounds was for that 50 milliliters, um, let's say it's 50 grams of basil oil. Note that everything in formula is done in weight in grams. So if you bought 50 milliliters, you should probably go and weigh that first to work out how many actual grams of the oil you got because it usually won't be the same as the milliliters. But for now, let's say that we bought 50 grams for 20 pounds. So we type those in here and then we press calculate and then it's calculated it as it only costs us 40p per gram. Next, after the cost per gram, we have a field for the IFRA limit. This is useful if you've got an IFRA limit for one of your raw materials and you want to know if you've gone over that limit in your final formulas. So let's say that basil oil has an IFRA limit of 5%. Now this isn't the actual IFRA limit, I'm not sure if there is one or not, but for the purposes of this tutorial, let's just pretend we've gone and looked up basil oil on the IFRA website, and we've gone and found that for the category of perfumes that we use, um, say for example, 4B for normal alcoholic spray on perfumes, say we've gone and looked at that and found that the limit is 5%. Well, we can go and type in five here, and that will add an IFRA limit of 5%. Now, later on, when we go and use this basil oil in our formulas, what you'll notice is if you've breached this 5% limit in the formula, then that entry in the formula will actually be highlighted in red. Finally, we have a date obtained, and this is simply to keep track of when we bought this stuff. So say our basil oil, say we bought it today, so we got the 8th of July, 2022. We can go and select that eight and press use selected and it will put in the date. This can be useful if we're wondering if some of our raw materials may have gone off a bit or expired to some degree. We can go and check the date for when we got them to see how old they actually are. After this, we have the fragrance pyramid slider. So at the moment, if you notice in the raw materials library, the basil essential oil doesn't have a pyramid symbol like anything else. And that's because we've not set one yet. So we have a super top note option here for something that's very short lived. Then we've got a top to mid note. Then we've got a mid note, a mid to base note option. And finally, a very much base note option. So if your basil essential oil lasts not too long, we might want to put it as a top to mid note, for example, as I think would be pretty normal for basil oil. 
Now, if you don't know if your raw materials are top, mid, or base notes, then this is the perfect notepad to go and find out. What I'd recommend is going to test your raw materials on a scent strip in dilution and timing how long it is that they're on that scent strip until you can no longer smell them. If it's not very long at all, say a few minutes, you can safely say that your raw material is really a super top note. Yet, the longer it lasts, the further you can put it down on this scale, and this just allows you to keep track of the relative uh, longevity of your different raw materials, and this can be useful later when looking at your formulas, so you've got a distribution of the top, mid, and base notes, and it can allow you to kind of diagnose in your formulas why, for example, it may be lasting not so long as you would have hoped. So next we have a description text field. So in this description field, um, we can write pretty much anything we want. So we can write that it's got a um, herbaceous odor. And we could say that um, this is one of my fav favorite uh, raw materials. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is you can pretty much write whatever you want, and you can also keep going if you want to write a lot and lots of paragraphs, then you can uh, you can keep going. So, um, let's leave it at this, let's just say herbaceous odor for now, and um, we can always go and add to this in the future. Now, finally, we've got a few more things. So, we've got a treat as solvent option here. I'll go over this in a second. And then we've got the dilutions and the usage in formulas. So treat as solvent is an option you would use for something that you dilute your other ingredients in, your other raw materials. It's not what you would use to actually um, put your main aromatic raw materials themselves. So if we go through our raw materials library, you notice we've got perfume as alcohol here. So say you're making perfumes with perfume as alcohol, then you can use your perfume as alcohol and say to treat it as a solvent. What that will do is disable the dilutions and the usage tables, and it will put this little droplet symbol next to the raw material to denote that it's a special case of raw material, it's a solvent. This will be important later when we go and look to our formulas, and it will help us out with different things like scaling and changing the concentrations of formulas. Um, so just note for now that there's special things you can do when you have a solvent which is denoted by this drop, and if you want to treat a raw material as a solvent, then you simply have to switch this little switch here in the raw materials card. So let's go back to our basil essential oil, and you can see we've got a dilutions table. So this is to denote the different dilutions you may have. For example, a lot of perfumers go and use pre-dilutions of their raw materials, and that can be just for evaluating, or it can also be for blending. Formula supports keeping track of and using different dilutions as part of your formulas. So say we've gone and taken our basil oil, and say we've gone and made a 10% dilution. Well, we can go and press add new dilution, and it's given us a 10% dilution. Say we wanted to do a 20% dilution instead, we can simply select that and type 20, and it will go and change that new dilution to 20. Again, say we went and made that dilution as soon as we bought the basil oil, then we can go and press the date, and we can go and set the date of the dilution today. That will just allow us to keep track of how old our dilutions are, and maybe if we want to consider replenishing them. After that, we've got a couple more options. So you'll notice we've got that FX button has just appeared on every dilution that we add apart from the original baseline 100% pure raw material dilution. So this pure raw material dilution, this is something that we can't change. This just represents the pure form of the raw material. Now for this 20% dilution we've just made, this FX button will go and help us make that dilution if we're unsure how to make it. So if we go and click on that, this is a little calculator that will help us make the 20% dilution. So say we're starting with our pure basil oil that we've just bought. So we're starting with our 100%, so non-diluted basil oil. And we want to go and make, uh, let's say 10 grams of the 20% dilution. We just type in 10 grams here and we press calculate. And what will happen is a pop-up will come up and it will say, well, if we want to make 10 grams of our basil essential oil diluted to 20%, you just need to go and add 2 grams of our pure 100% basil essential oil, and then 8 grams of some kind of solvent of your choosing. So in our case, that may well be our perfumer's alcohol. So this is simply just a little helper tool to help you go and make dilutions. It can be quite useful when you've got a funny dilution or a bit of an unusual dilution that you're trying to make, and it can save you the time of going to get your calculator. 
Finally, for the dilutions, there is a dedicated description field, and you can access this by pressing the plus button next to the dilution. Now this is if you want to write a note about the specific dilution. For example, at 20%, you could say, I think this is a good strength. And the use of these things is, say you've got a lot of different dilutions, say you've got a 1% dilution as well, you might think that, I don't know, this doesn't last very long or something like that. So it just gives you an opportunity to write different things about the different properties of the different dilutions. Now finally, at the bottom of the raw materials card is a usage in formulas table. Now we haven't gone and made any formulas yet, so this is completely empty, but later on we'll come back to it and see what happens when we start making formulas. Before we move on to the formula section, I just want to talk a little bit more about the categories for the raw materials. So you noticed earlier that we selected aromatic for our basil oil. The question you may have been asking at that point in the tutorial though was, what if I don't like these categories? What if I want to make my own categories? Well, luckily you can go and make your own categories and you do that with the category manager, which is in the top left of the raw materials library. So in Formula, there is a whole system for creating and managing your own categories, and that means you can go and organize your raw materials exactly how you want to. So at the moment, we've got a list of all of our current categories, and we can go and modify the names of those if we want to. So for aromatic, for example, let's say we want to rename that to aromatic herbs. Well, we can go and do that. But we can also go and do other things. Let's say we want to add a new category entirely for our basil oil. We can go and press add new category. And let's say we want to add a whole category for basil because maybe later on we're going to add a lot more basil oil variants because let's say we're a perfumer who's specialized in basil oils or something like that. So we're going to type in basil as a category and press enter to create. Now, when you go and create a new category, the color is initialized with this black and white color. However, actually for all of the colors for the categories, you can go and change them to a color of your choosing. So if you go and click on the little color swatch next to the category, it will bring up a color picker. So this will go and show us the black and white color is currently selected. But if we go and scroll down, we can actually go and choose a new color for that category. So let's say in this case, the basil is going to be some kind of greeny color. Um, let's go and pick this one, for example. So now you can see we've got this color selected for the basil. So another thing here is, say you want to go and delete a category. Um, for example, this modifier category, so we don't want it anymore. Well, you can go and right click and you can go and press delete. And if you're on iOS, so iPhone or iPad, you do a long press instead to bring up that menu. So if we go and press delete, we go delete that category. And then if we go and press done, we can go and see that the hedion, which was previously in that category, has now been changed to uncategorized because the category has been deleted. So we've got this basil oil, and let's go and put it into that basil category that we've got and made. Now remember earlier on I showed you that you can use this search bar? Well, sometimes if you had lots of categories, you might forget some of them. So something you might go and do is go to the category manager to look up which categories you have. Now a little shortcut that you can do in Formula is if you go and right click or long press on iOS on that category, you can actually go and use this search option. And what that does is it automatically goes and fills that into the search bar for you so you filter down to that category. Now one final thing before we go from this section is I didn't actually show you before how to go and delete raw materials. Again, it's the same thing. You can go and right click or long press on the raw material and press delete. Another thing you can do with most tables in Formula is you can actually use the swipe on your trackpad or if you have an iOS device, you can go and swipe with your finger. So if you go and swipe left, then this delete option comes up. So you can go and swipe to delete and it will ask you if you wanna delete for sure. And then we can go and press confirm and delete that raw material from the library. So there you have it. That's the raw materials side to the app. Now let's go and look at the formula side. So. At the bottom on the tab, let's click on the formulas library, and this opens up our formulas panel. So again, another thing we notice straight away is similar to the raw materials library, the formula library also has a icon for a category manager. So if we go and click on that, we can see at the moment we've got no categories for formulas, but let's go and create one right now. So um, let's say my first formulas, 
and that will just be the category that we can use for this. Formula categories don't have colors like raw materials categories, so that's why there's not a swatch there. But again, you can do all the things like search for that category or go and delete it if you don't want it anymore. Next in the formulas library, we have this little purchase icon. This can be used to purchase the full version of the app if you haven't already. If we click on that, because I've already got the full version, you see that just a message comes up to say you've already got it. However, if you've just gone and installed formula on a new device, and let's say you've already purchased it on your iCloud account before, this button will probably still ask you to go and purchase the app, and that's simply because the app hasn't recognized that you've purchased it yet. All you need to do is go and press the restore purchase option that pops up and that will recover your existing version of the purchase tied to your account and it will go and reactivate it for you on the new device. So again, the formulas library works very similarly to the raw materials library. Again, we've got a search bar, but obviously we can't search for anything because we don't have any formulas. So let's go and add our first formula. So again, we press the add icon and this has gone to add a new formula for us. So at the moment we can see that formula is uncategorized, doesn't have a title, and it will go and show a date because we just gone and made that formula now in July 2022. Though we can go and change that date or even remove it entirely if we want to as well. So let's go and rename this formula and we do that by selecting the name of the formula on the top of the header bar and let's call it Basil Perfume 1 because, well, let's say we're just testing out a first version of a new Basil Perfume. So what we can now go and do is we can go and add entries to this. So if we press the add new entry, click that, and what we can do is now we have a selection of all of our raw materials. So we can go find the one we want, and then we can go and click that, and that will go and add it to our formula. Let's say we want to add a few more things to our perfume. So as well as basil essential oil, maybe we want to add some lavender and maybe we want to add some musks as a base note, so we could add some ethylene brassolate. And then finally, we might want to add something maybe uh, citrusy, so we could add some bergamot in there as well. So what you'll notice is that all of these raw materials have been added, and for all of them, we're currently using that 100% or pure dilution of the raw material, and then we've got zero grams so far of each one. So let's go and add some weights in here. Let's say in our formula, we've got one gram of basil essential oil. Now, when I've gone and done that, you can see that straight away the basil's gone red. And that's because if you remember earlier, we put that IFRA limit of 5% of the formula. At the moment, the only thing in our formula is basil and therefore it's 100% of the formula. And what formula has done is it's detected that at the moment in our perfume, Basil has breached the 5% IFRA limit, so it's highlighting it in red for us just to tell us that, hey, there's something in the perfume that's gone over the IFRA limit. Now, if we go and add some more components to our formula, so let's say there's 5 grams of bergamot, we could say there's 10 grams of ethylene brassolate, and maybe 0.5 grams of lavender. So now, again, we've got this in our perfume. Now we still are over that limit for basil, but another thing you may notice is we don't actually have any solvents or any alcohol or anything to dilute our perfume down yet. At the moment, we've just got a perfume concentrate. So something we can go and do is add some of that perfume as alcohol, that solvent that we had earlier, and we'll go and add that to the formula. And if we go and add, let's say quite a lot of that, we could go and add something like 84, maybe 0.5 grams and oops let's say 83.5 grams and that will make our whole formula up to 100 grams and that's just for convenience so now we've gone and got this uh, this formula written here we've also got this total panel so we can go and see that the formula in total is 100 grams but also we can see the total percent and actually the individual percentages all in this column here so we can see as a total the formula is made up 16.5% of our raw materials. And you can see now the individual percentages of each of these. So our basil oil is one gram at 1%, uh, five grams of bergamot at 5%. And this obviously will make sense because we've got 100 grams. So the percentage and the amount of grams are gonna be the same in this uh, situation. And we've also gone and got our perfume as alcohol. So that is the percentage of the raw material in our total formula. But what if we're interested just in the percentage of the concentrate? What if we're only interested in the raw materials themselves and we want to ignore the perfume as alcohol? 
Well, if you go and click on this column here, the column with the percentage, it will actually cycle through to its next mode. And this column has three different modes. Firstly, you've got the absolute percentage. So that's the percentage of each raw material as a total of your complete formula, including all of the alcohol. If we go and click on it now, it's gone and cycled round now to our relative percentage. And what the relative percentage is, is what is the percentage of the different raw materials in the formula when we ignore all of the perfumer's alcohol or whatever solvent you have and just focus on the raw materials themselves. So notice the perfumer's alcohol has a hyphen here or a dash. That's because it's got that solvent switch on, it's counted as a solvent and therefore it's counted it as having zero contribution whatsoever. The rest of the raw materials, their relative percentages have been displayed here and the relative percentage will always add up to 100% because there's always going to be 100% over overall of whatever things you have in your formula. Now finally, if we go cycle through again, so we click on that final column one more time, we now see a cost analysis for the formula. So if you remember that our basil oil was priced at 40p per gram, we can see here we've got one gram of basil oil and it's given us a value of 40p. Now for the rest of the raw materials, we don't have any cost in there, so it's displayed it as zero. But if you go and put a cost value into all of your raw materials, then these will get added up and it will get added to the bottom of your formula. Let's say we want to go and do that for bergamot. Now, instead of going back to the raw materials library and searching for bergamot and then finding it, we can actually just go and click on the bergamot entry and that will take us straight to the bergamot raw materials card in the raw materials side or the raw materials tab of the app. So let's say the uh, cost for bergamot is 30p per gram. We can just type in 0 0.3 because that's 0 0.3 pounds. Press enter. And then we've done that for the raw material. Now, if you remember earlier on when I was talking about the raw materials, that we also have this usage table at the bottom. Now we've gone and used bergamot in a formula, we can go and see that there's this formula, Basil Perfume 1, where we've used bergamot. So what this is saying is we've used bergamot in one formula, which is why there's one row, and we've used it in Basil Perfume 1, that's the name of the formula, and we're using the 100% version of bergamot, and the total or the absolute concentration of bergamot in that formula is 5%. So if we're interested in that formula, we can then go and click on that formula in the usage table and that will take us back to the formula. Okay, so now we've got our formula. What other options have we got? What other things can we do with it? Well, the first one here is we've got this export button. So if we go and click that, we can actually go and export the formula as a PDF. So if I go and export that to my desktop and press save, what it will do is it will go and generate this little PDF document of our formula. And this is nice if say we want to print out the formula or go and send it to someone else. As well as the export, we have an option to duplicate the formula. So if we go and duplicate this formula, we can either use this uh, duplicate button here, or we can actually go and right click on the formula in the formulas library and choose the duplicate option there as well. Once we've pressed duplicate, we'll be asked to have a new name. So this time we may want to call it Basil Perfume 2. It may be the second iteration of our formula. Then we press create. Now in the second version of our formula, we can go and make some changes. So for example, say the basil was too weak in the first formula, we can go and increase that to two grams. And say um, the lavender was too strong, then we can go and delete that. So right click and press delete formula entry, two grams. And say the lavender was too strong, well then we can go and delete that entirely. So again, you can swipe to delete. And then let's say we want to make it add up to 100 grams again. Well, we can go and type in um, 83 here, and that will make that back to 100 grams. As well as the duplicate option, there's also a sorting option. So if you go and click this little A symbol in the top, this shows you the different ways you can sort your formula. So at the moment, it's sorted alphabetically. So you can see it's A, B, C, D, E, but we can also choose other things. So say we want to sort by cost, for example. If we go and press that, it's now gone and put the most expensive raw materials in our formula at the top, and then they're laid out after that in decreasing order of how much they cost. We can also do other things like percentage or concentration. So if we do percentage, now if we go back, cycle through, so click on the final column once again and get back to our percentage column, 
we can see that the ethylene brassolate, the highest percentage thing, is now at the top, followed by the bergamot and then the basil, which is the lowest percentage. Finally, we also have a stats view for the formula. So if we go and click on this little pie chart icon, we have something that's similar to the raw materials card from before. This time we have an option to set a category for the formula. So if we go and click on the category, we can go and select this My First Formulas that we created earlier. We've also got an option to change the date. So if we'd gone and made this formula a few years ago, then we can go and go back to the date where we actually made it and go and select that. Next, we've got a place for notes about the formula. So let's say I thought that this formula was better than the last one. I can type in something like this formula smells fresher, for example, and more well balanced. After the description, we've got two more things, and these are the charts for the formula. Firstly, we've got the fragrance pyramid, and this is simply a chart to show the distribution of the different parts of the fragrance pyramid in the formula. So in this case, we can see that we've got some high notes and some bass notes, but we don't have any top, middle, or bottom notes. Now in a larger perfume formula where you've got a lot of raw materials, this pyramid will start to give you an idea of which points in the fragrance pyramid your perfume may or may not be lacking in. And this gives you a little bit of an overview and it helps you decide which kind of raw materials you may want to increase or reduce to make a bit more of a balanced formula. Another feature is the fingerprint chart at the bottom. And what this does is simply plots out the different categories in your formula as a percentage. So this shows us that our perfume is mostly made of musks and it's got some citrus in it and also a small amount of basil. This view is simply another point of reference and it can be a bit more of a creative way to visualize your formula and what it might smell like. Next, let's have a look at the mark or highlight system. So if we go back to that original formula, Basil Perfume 1, I'm just gonna quickly actually set the category to the same category as the other one. Now, remember in this formula, we said that the basil essential oil was too weak. So that was the change we wanted to make for the next formula, we wanted to increase that. Well, there's a way you can actually denote this inside of formula. If we right click on the entry for basil essential oil, we get up a lot of options. And I'll take you through all of these options. So for example, we've already seen that you can delete a formula entry. But then above that is a lot of options for highlighting formula entries. So there's three different types of highlight you can apply to a formula entry. And all that does is highlight the formula entry in a different color. So we can do a highlight, which makes it yellow. We can mark it as too strong, or we can mark it as too weak. So as you can see, this is just a way of allowing us to remember certain things about the formula. Now, if you've got a formula where you've got some of these highlights and you want to remove them, you can right click and press remove highlight. Or let's say you've gone and got a lot of these highlights on your formula and you want to remove all of them. Well, then you can right click on any formula entry and just press remove all highlights. Anyway, for now, let's leave the basil oil highlighted as too weak because that serves to remind us next time we look at this basil perfume one, we can see that this is too weak. And then when we go to basil perfume two, that's the one that we've increased. So it kind of makes sense. And this is just a useful tool. Now let's take a look at the other options we can do with formula entries. So if we right click on the formula entry, we've also got replace with formula, change raw material and dilutions and scaling. So let's show how replace raw material works. Let's duplicate our perfume again and make basil perfume number three and say this time we didn't like the bergamot. Well, what we can actually go and do is replace that bergamot with a different raw material. So let's press change raw material and then we can simply select something else. So this time we might wanna choose Rose Chifco, which is a rose base. Now that we've looked at how we can replace a raw material, let's start looking at working with dilutions. So if you remember earlier from the basil essential oil, we actually added some different dilutions. So for example, we added this 20% dilution. Now, when we go to make our formula, we may actually wish to create the formula using that 20% dilution instead of the pure basil essential oil. Say we wanna keep that safely in our cupboard and just for now, start using the 20% dilution in order to do our blending. Well, as you can see in our formula, currently we're using the 100% basil essential oil. Now, if we right click and press dilutions and scaling, we enter the dilutions and scaling section. Now, this is one of formula's most powerful features. 
and I'll go through all of the options in this section shortly. So what you can see in this panel is firstly the change dilution section. Now it says what we currently have is our basil essential oil at a 2% concentration in the formula. Now we can go and select a new dilution, however before we go and do this it's important to note there are actually three different methods. If you would like to find more information about these methods and how they work, you can actually go on this little information icon and it will explain to you exactly what these are doing. Essentially though, we've got three ones. We've got preserve weight, preserve percentage and exchange solvent. So currently we're on preserve weight. Now if we go back and look at our basil essential oil, we can see that we've got two grams of 100%. If we go to dilutions and scaling and just use preserve weight, 20%, what it will do is it will keep our two grams and simply change the dilution down to 20%. Now, this is great in some situations. For example, if you just added a new raw material and you want to select the dilution to use before you actually go and input the weight. But in this case, we already came up with our percentage of basil in the formula. And if we go back to perfume two, you can see that the basil was at 2%. By changing the basil to 20%, we've actually gone and modified our formula, and you can see that in that now the basil is only at 0.4%, or five times less than it was before, and that's because we're using our dilution, which is five times less concentrated than before. So in this case, we may not wish to use the preserve weight option, so we can go back to 100%. Next, let's take a look at exchanging dilution by preserving percentage. So if we look at our formula entry for basil essential oil, we can see that it's on two grams and 2%. Now, if we go to the dilutions and scaling menu and then select preserve percentage, if we go and choose our new dilution to be 20% with this method, what's gonna happen is that 2% in the formula, that will be maintained. But in doing so, that's forced the weight of the entry to change to adjust to that. In changing the weight of the entry to keep that percentage constant, it has also caused the other percentages and the total percentage in the formula to change. Let's now reverse that, so we'll go back to dilutions and scaling, preserve percentage, and go back to 100%, and we're back where we left off. Now let's look at the third and final method of changing dilutions in formula, and that's using the exchange solvent option. So what the exchange solvent option does is it tries to maintain the percentages of all the raw materials in the formula, and it does that by exchanging solvent in or out of your raw material entry in order to create the dilution. So if you think about it, a 20% dilution of basil oil, well, in order to have the same concentration of basil oil at the end in your formula, it still needs to have two grams of actual basil oil inside of it. So in a sense, we need to pick a dilution where we've got still two grams of basil oil and we've just added the amount of alcohol to that in order to make it a 20% dilution. So two grams is 20% of 10, which means in total we would need 10 grams of 20% diluted basil oil. Now, the other eight grams of that 20% dilution actually consists of alcohol. So what we could do in theory is take that alcohol out of the perfumer's alcohol or the solvent and go and add it to our two grams of basil oil here, and then we could go and hypothetically convert that into a single entry of 20% diluted basil oil. The reason that that's so helpful is it means the total weight of our formula stays exactly the same because we don't have to add or remove anything, we're just exchanging between the solvent that's already in the formula. And what that means is that all the other percentages also remain the same. So we can go and try that now. Let's go on the basil oil, right click dilutions and scaling, exchange solvent and go to 20%. And what you'll notice is that weight has changed to 10 grams, but the actual percentage has remained the same at two grams. As well as that, the total formula weight has stayed the same and the total formula percentage and the percentage of all the other raw materials has stayed the same. And the way that's been achieved is by taking eight grams out of the solvent, so in this case, the perfumer's alcohol, and adding that to the original two grams in order to create our 20% dilution of basil. And just to prove to you quickly that everything else has remained the same, if you look at these numbers here and I switch back to perfume two, you can see the only things that have changed are the weights of the basil oil and the perfumer's alcohol. Everything else has stayed the same. Now that we've looked at how you can rewrite your formula into different dilutions, let's take a look at these scaling options. So if we take our perfume and duplicate it again, I always duplicate it before using these options because there's no undo function. Then we can call this one scaled, and then we can start playing around with the scaling options. 
To access the scaling options, again, right click on one of the formula entries and go to the dilutions and scaling menu. Here, there are two options for scaling your formula with respect to the formula entry that you selected. So firstly is with respect to the current weight of the formula entry. So at the moment, the ethylene brassolate, there's 10 grams of it. Well, what if we wanted to scale our whole formula up such that now there was 15 grams of ethylene brassolate, but everything else was also scaled up in proportion, so all of the different ratios stayed the same? Well, we would just type in 15 to go to a new value of 15 grams for ethylene brassolate. Then a pop-up will appear asking if you're sure you want to do this. Press scale formula. And as you can see, now we've got 15 grams of ethylene brassolate, but everything else has also been scaled up accordingly. So instead of 100 grams, we've now got 150 grams of total things in the formula, and all of the percentages have remained the same. So if we go to perfume three and go back and forth, you can see that the percentages haven't changed. So now if we go back to the dilutions and scaling menu, let's take a look at the other option. So this one is to scale the formula using entry percentage. Now at the moment, there's 10% of the ethylene brassolate in the formula. Now this is similar to the exchange solvent option from before. What this will do is it will make your whole formula more concentrated or less concentrated in order to achieve the desired concentration of this formula entry while maintaining its proportions to the other formula entries. So for example, imagine we wanted to make our whole formula more concentrated such that instead of being at 10% in the total formula, now the ethylene bracelet is going to be 15%, but all of the other raw materials in the formula are also going to become more concentrated to the same amount. Well then, what we would do is simply type in 15 and press enter, scale formula, and what you'll be able to see is that some of the perfumer's alcohol has been exchanged into the weights of the other raw materials, such that those raw materials have become more concentrated and the perfumer's alcohol less so, that means overall the percentages of the raw materials have gone up and the percentage of the alcohol has gone down, yet the weight has remained the same. A quick thing to note here is that you do need to have some of that free perfumer's alcohol or that free solvent, whatever solvent you're using, in the formula in order to do the scaling. And that's because we're removing some weight from that in order to compensate and give the weight to the other things in order to do all those percentages correctly. So if you don't have enough perfumer's alcohol or any other solvent already in your formula, what you need to do is go and add to that by either adding it in the first place when you're writing your formula, or you can go and use that exchange solvent option before with the dilutions in order to free up some solvent. So for example, say we didn't have enough perfumer's alcohol in the formula, well, we've also got some perfumer's alcohol in that basil at 20%. If you remember, the other 80% is just made up of the solvent. So what we could do is we could go and we could go to dilutions and scaling, the exchange solvent, change that to 100%, and what that would do if we were to do that is it would take that extra solvent back out from the basil oil and it would put it into our solvent entry here, the perfume is alcohol. So if you don't have that entry, make sure you add it. You can leave it at zero and then use that option to exchange solvent into that entry. And then once you've got some kind of weight or some amount in that entry, then you can go and do all these scaling options to increase your concentration at the expense of that entry. Let's now take a look at the other scaling options. So what we've just looked at is the scaling options relative to a formula entry, but sometimes you're going to want to scale your perfume with respect to the whole formula. For example, what if you wanted to scale it such that overall your perfume was, for example, a 20% or a 25% eau de parfum concentration? Well, to do this, we can look at the formula-wide scaling options. So firstly, if we go to scale formula, we see a new menu with four different scaling options. Let's go through these. So firstly, we have the scale formula to total weight, and this is similar to the scale entry to total weight, except for this time, it's scaling your whole formula. So at the moment, your whole formula is 150 grams. Now let's imagine that we've got a 100 milliliter beaker or something like that. Say we only want to make 50 grams to make sure that we have enough space in our beaker to make the formula. Well, then we can go and type 50 and that will scale our whole formula down to 50 grams. Another thing we can do is if we go back to scale formula, we can also do it by a scaling factor. So say we actually wanted to go back up to 100 grams. 
Well, instead of having to type 100 grams, we could also say to just times everything by two. Now this could be useful if you know exactly how much you need to make for say one perfume, but you wanna scale it up to five perfumes. So in that case, you could type five to do five X your formula. So let's type in two. We'll scale the formula up by two and now we'll get back to 100 grams. A quick note here, I'm right clicking on the Mac, but if you've got an iPad or an iPhone, you can just long press instead to get the same menu up. So now let's look at the other two options. This time it's the scaling by percentage options. So these two options at the end are the ones which use exchange with your solvent or your alcohol. Currently we've got quite a lot of free solvent in our formula and that's why these scale up to options are here. So the can scale up to, this is essentially to say how concentrated it would be or how much you would have scaled up the concentration if we were to remove all of the solvent, at which point we couldn't remove any more and then we wouldn't be able to scale anywhere beyond this. Then we have the actual options in order to do our scaling. So it says we can scale our formula up to 67.97%. Now let's hypothetically imagine that we want to scale up to 100% because we want to make a pure perfume concentrate. Well, at the moment we can't do that, but what we can do is 67.97%. So if we press enter on that, we can at least get it that far. So by doing that, what we've done is removed as much of the perfume as alcohol essentially as possible. So here's our formula at 67.97%. Now, in order to go and scale up further, we're going to have to get rid of the solvent inside our basil essential oil and remove that in order to free up some solvent that we can then remove to increase our concentration. So if I go to the basil oil and right click dilutions and scaling, now we can use that exchange solvent option and we can go back up to 100% and that's gone and given us some more perfumers alcohol, which we can scale into. Now, if we go back to the scale formula, we can go and we can pick a new percentage to scale up to. So we can either choose the percentage or just pick how many times more concentrated than it currently is. So I'll press enter, press scale formula, and there we go. We've now got our formula scaled up as far as we can go, which in this case was to 99.92%. Now, formula doesn't allow you to scale quite up to the maximum limit sometimes, and that's just to do with the way that the rounding works in the software. However, as you can see, we've almost got to 100% and all we need to do is now go and manually edit that weight back to zero grams of perfumers alcohol and there we have it, our final concentration is now been scaled up to 100%. Now, this isn't the best looking number, 99.916, so what we could go and do is now scale formula again and we can go and scale that back up to 100 grams to make a nice round number. So now if we go and look at our percentages, we can see we've got some percentages here. These should be pretty much the same as the percentages of the formula before we scaled it because everything was scaled in a relative way. So if we go and look back to our perfume three, we can cycle through to the absolute percentages. So we can see 58.82, 29.41 and 11.76. If we go back to our scaled version, we can see that the percentages are still the same. So the absolute percentages, the relative proportions of the formula haven't changed after all of that scaling. All that's changed is that we've removed all of the perfume as alcohol and changed the total concentration. So if we go back to absolute concentration in our scaled version, it's 100. So we've got a pure perfume concentrate. Yet in the original version, it was at 17%. Again, we could go back to our scaled formula and then we could go back and go to scale formula. And now we could go to scale formula to absolute percentage again, and we could scale it back down to 17%. Select scale formula. And if we go and look at that and then compare it to our original formula, you can see that we've got exactly the same thing. The only difference here is that at the moment we're using pure basil oil instead of the 20% dilution. Once again, in the scale version, if we wanted to get back to that 20% dilution, we can go dilutions and scaling, exchange solvent, back to 20%. And now going back to perfume three, we can see that we're at exactly the same point as we started off at. Now moving back to our example perfume, I wanna show you a couple more features. So let's say for example that we don't like the rose in here, but we're not too sure what to replace it with. Well, if we're unsure of what we wanna do for our perfume or on our cords, 
One little feature in Formula that can give you some inspiration is the generate random formula option. And this option is just here to give you some ideas for some combinations you may not have thought of. So you can go and right click on the add new formula or long press on the iPhone or iPad and then press the create random formula option. What that will do is it will create you a new formula and it will just give you some random proportions in here. And the idea here is just to give you a bit of inspiration if you're stuck for ideas. Now, the reason I went and created this random formula is because if we go back to our perfume three, I actually wanted to do a new iteration. So again, we're gonna go and duplicate the formula and call it Basil Perfume four. And this time, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go and replace that rose with the random formula. So what I'm saying here is imagine we've got this formula and we've got an accord that we've just made. In this case, it's a random formula, but let's imagine we've actually gone and worked on this. And let's say it's a nice woody candy accord. So we've gone and made that accord separately as a different formula. And now we want to go and add that accord into our perfume. So let's do that in place of the rose. So what we need to do is we need to right click on the rose and use the final option, which we haven't discussed yet, and that is the replace with formula option. So if we click replace with formula, we'll now have a list of all of our formulas. And what we can go and do is actually press on that new accord that we've just made, click on that, and what it will do is it will replace that rows entry with all of these different pieces. And what it will do is it will take the total weight of the rows and it will split it up into the same proportions that everything is found in the accord. As you can see in this accord, the biggest percentage is the fructone, and not too far after that is the cedarwood virginian. If we go back and look at this perfume, if we go and sort everything by the percentage here, we can see that out of the new things we've added, so ignoring the basil oil and the ethylene brassolate, the largest percentage is the fructone, and then not too far off that again is the cedarwood virginian, and then in descending percentages, we've got these last three things here as well. So that's all of the features inside the app. However, there are a few more features that can be found in the advanced settings. So if you're on Mac, you can go to the taskbar at the top and press formula and then preferences. If you're using an iPhone or an iPad, you need to go into the settings app on your device and then scroll down until you reach the formula settings and you'll be able to find the same menu. So here are the settings for formula. Firstly, we've got a few different options for the formulas. So the first setting is to keep marks when duplicating formulas. Now, if we go and duplicate a formula, but if we go and put a mark on it, so for example, a highlight, that iSui Super is in yellow. When we go duplicate it, if we go and call it number two, when we go and duplicate it, that highlight will be lost. However, if we go and delete that, and then we go into the settings, and then we make it so that the marks are kept. Now, when we go and duplicate that formula, that highlight will remain. So depending on what you're doing with your formulas, you may wish to have the highlights remain or to have them eradicated every time you duplicate the formula. Next, we've got the default dilution option. Now this can be very useful if you're formulating in pre-dilutions. For example, remember how we made our 20% dilution for basil oil? Well, imagine that we had all of our raw materials in a 20% dilution, and we usually formulated our perfumes using those 20% dilution. Well, what we could do is type 20 into our default dilution. And now if we go to add a new entry and we select basil oil, we can see that the new entry for basil oil, the zero grams entry, has actually been added straight away as 20%. Now this is obviously very useful because if you want to have everything as a 20% dilution most of the time, it would be really annoying to have to, each time you add something, then go back into the dilutions and scaling menu and select that dilution. Essentially what this is doing is saving you an extra step when you're making your formulas. Going back into preferences, and next we have some options for the user interface. So if you look at this little purchase button up here, this button is for purchasing the app. Well, say you've already purchased the app, you may want to hide this button so it doesn't clog up the UI. Well, what you can do is you can go into preferences, press that option, and then this button will now be gone. Again, you can go into preferences and we can also hide the dates in the formulas library. So if we look in our formulas library, we've got the dates for when we created our formulas. If we don't want to see that, then we can just press this check mark and that will hide those dates so we don't have to look at them anymore. 
And then also in the preferences for the UI, we've got the description in the raw materials search. So if we go to the raw materials library, let's go look at our basil again. And here it says herbaceous odor. We might also say used in pizza. Now, when we are searching for the things in the raw materials library, say we wanted to search for all of the raw materials that are also used in pizzas. Maybe we're doing a project where we want to look at things like the smell of pizza, for example. Well, at the moment, if we type in pizza, we won't get any results, and that's because we've got no raw materials with pizza in the name or pizza in the category. So say we want to search as well across this description box. Well, what we can do is we can go to formula, preferences and include description in the raw material search. Then if I type in pizza again and now hit search, this time the basil oil will come up. And if we had anything else in pizza, that would also come up. So for example, say we uh, wanted to say that lemons were also used in pizza, we could put pizza here. And then if we went to search for pizza, now lemon and basil oil would both come up. So let's go back to the preferences and see what else we have. So the next option is the remove PDF watermark. Well, at the moment, when we export our PDFs, they have a little thing on that says created by formula. For example, if we go and create our raw materials PDF, if we go and look at this, we can see that we've got our raw materials, but it also says created using formula. Now, if you have the free version of formula, you can't remove this watermark, but if you've got the paid version, then you can go and remove it so that your exports look a bit cleaner. So if we go and do that, remove watermark from PDF, then if we go back to our PDF, we can see that the watermark has been removed. And this is also the same for the formulas PDFs, which you can export. We also have some other export options. So this is the file type to share as, now this one is specifically for the formula exports. So when exporting your formulas, you can export them as PDFs, but sometimes you may wanna export them as a markdown file or a TSV file. So a markdown file is useful for kind of lightweight text readers, and a TSV file would be if you wanted to import your formula into something like Excel or a different spreadsheet software. So if you go and select one of those options, when you go to the formulas and you go and export your formula here, it will change the different output depending on what you select. So finally, we've got two more options. So we've got the use custom colors. Now this option doesn't do anything on the Mac, but it does do something on the iOS. So the iPhone or the iPad. If you've got an iPhone or an iPad, you can tick this box to get a completely custom color picker. So this is when you're setting your raw materials categories. At the moment, when you select a color for your raw materials, you've got a set of swatches which are predefined in the app. It tries to have quite a range of different colors, and it's also been made such that these colors should look quite well together. They also adapt to light and dark mode. However, that said, you may have a color that you can't find in the swatches that you wanted to use for your raw materials. So what you can do is put on that setting to have the custom color picker, and then you can actually go and select literally any color you want, though if you go and do that, it will no longer adapt to light and dark mode. So if you're on iPad or iPhone, that's another setting that you can use. Finally, we've got one more setting, and this setting is all to do with privacy. This is the hide materials usage. So if we go to our basil oil, and now we've gone and used it in a lot of formulas, we can see in all of our formulas, well, in most of them, we've used it at 2%, in one of them, we used it at 1%, and then in that formula at the end where we just added it to show how you can add the 20% straight away, it's at 0% because we didn't add any weight to it. Well, in theory, if you'd made a lot of formulas with a lot of different perfumes, it would show all the different percentages at which you'd used basil oil. So this could be really useful for when you're trying to work out at what level in the future to use your basil oil. However, the problem with this is, say you're going somewhere in public and you wanted to show someone else all of your notes about your raw materials, but you didn't want to share your secret formulas or you didn't want to give any clues at to what levels you've used it in your different formulas. Well, what you can do is you can go back into preferences and use the hide materials usage option. And then if we do that, 
what will happen is now the different names of the raw materials are scrambled. So you can still see the usage percentage. So it's still useful if you want to share with someone, oh, in general, I use Basil at this kind of level, but it no longer says the names of the formulas. So there's no way of knowing actually which perfumes you've used the basil oil in at which levels. Anyway, that is the complete tutorial for formula. Now, I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you have any questions regarding something that maybe I didn't cover that well, please do ask in the comments in the video and I'll try to give an answer. Or if there's something that's quite complicated, say something to do with the scaling options and a lot of people have the same question, then maybe I'll do a follow-up video to try to go over that a little bit better. And just one final reminder, now that you know how to use formula, if you want to go and try it out for free, you can just go to the app store and then you can go and download it. And if you enjoy it, you can always go and purchase the full version and that will unlock so that you can make unlimited raw materials and unlimited formulas. At the moment in the free version, there's a limit of 25 of each. So thank you for watching the video and good luck with all of your perfume formulas.